This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, honey! I'm gay. Wow, so last time we basically figured out everything. Sheena was really Callisto U. She was like working with the smuggling ring. Sent, uh, we discovered the true the identity of the Yadagarasu. Pretty much all the loose ends have been tied up. And so we're at the end of the case, right? Developer of the game laughs mm. in Japanese. <laughs> it's exactly the same! <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Miles Edge Face Attorney Investigations. Even though it felt like that was the end, no, we're on the end part one of I Think Free. Oh boy. We still have like a third of the case left, so let's start knocking out turnabout the end of Turnabout of Ways. So Marty, you're thinking that the true like big bad, the like leader of the smuggling arena is one of the ambassadors. Who do you think is more suspicious? Um... They're suspicious for different reasons. So, like, Polano's suspicious because he's basically acting like Gammy's just like, oh, everything's <laughs> great. And then he could be like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the old man is suspicious because he I He hasn't really like talked all that much. He hasn't talked all that much. And here's the thing. I feel like most ambassadors would be old men like him. Mm -hmm. So why is it like there's like an old guy who's like the ambassador of one country and then like the young hip the dude hip young guy <laughs> who's like uh, ambassador for the other country? I'm sure ambassadors like roll over at some point, but even like the president of the United States has to be what like 35? Yeah, to be I think president. that's the youngest. Yeah, it's like 30 something. We still keep getting old fogies though as president pretty much every year because everybody likes old fogies because they're like they've been around forever. Yeah. Why not make also them president? there's a ton of evidence that we haven't even used yet. Like so you know, bills. so you know things like the passion flowers and the hot dog box is going to come to, into play in the Probably. future. Probably. Yeah. The thing is, we haven't tied up anything with um, old bag and, and, and casino. <laughs> yeah. yeah. March fifteenth, twelve oh seven a.m. Fiatrum Neutralis Lobby. So now we know who the Yadagorasu really was. And yet, there remains much to this case that needs to be resolved. Like how the weapons crossed country lines, for example. The two countries have incredibly strict security systems and entry procedures. That's Ruff just was able to walk through. The Bobbleys guards are like, Oh, you're going to walk? Come on in, man. He's also <laughs> part of the investigation team. No, even before then, before they knew who Edgeworth was, it's like, you want to come to Babal? Please come in. We really want tours. Well, Bob, Babal is easy to get into, but like, Alabast, it was like, Kung Fu is sacred. Know. Master Ugwe will only let in the select few. <laughs> Why do you keep saying that? Because he has like, the old, like, hunched over, like, fame. Yeah. And he has the same staff, basically. But Master Ugwe, Ugwe is not, like, hunched over. And he's, he's not a tree. Spry. So. <laughs> Alba looks like a tree. He does not look like a tree. He kind of looks like a tree. Be a bush because he's hunched over. No, he's got like the branch as his nose. Okay, I will have to see it in person. And he's got like the really wavy, like gold, silver hair that could be the leaves. Anyhow. <laughs> Short of a miracle, it's impossible for someone to have smuggled them in. Smuggling them in, huh? We will need to open a new line of investigation on just this aspect alone. But before we do, I would like to go through my evidence once more. Unnecessary evidence has been removed. Remaining evidence has been rearranged. Hey, there's a VCR here, sir. Yeah, that's great. The exact did we? Same nope, we didn't get rid of the hot dog box, so that's probably unnecessary important. evidence. This is very important. I need these hot dogs for later. Let's watch some Dragon Tales, sir. <laughs> now we can see what's on the tape Detective Bad gave us. Dragon Tales. <laughs> it's just like the complete <laughs> season of Dragon Tales. No, it's because they were saying there were like two different videotapes. One of them, <laughs> this basketball, been... basketball boy was like, no, no, my precious videotape. It's just like the complete series of <laughs> Dragon Tales on. But Black it has Black like the one episode that never left like America that's like that's illegal in Babal so it was like, smuggling in. Yeah. That's exactly. actually what the smuggling rings behind. Yeah, it's like in um China when like Winnie the Pooh was banned. Yeah, because <laughs> It's like that. I won't even go into more details yep. on that. This piece of evidence from the KG8 incident hidden from sight for ten long years. I just know that this is related to the current case somehow. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please play the tape for us. Sure thing, sir! Hola, niños. <laughs> and he wished on a dragon skin. That's what <laughs> started the Dragon Tales. Yeah. Oh. Manny, what's up? This man. It's Manny Cochin. I recognize that ugly face anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and he's holding the knife in his hand. This looks like footage from the security camera at the entrance of an apartment building. An apartment building? How do you figure that? Unlike you, I actually read the summary files on the KG8 incident. 
and the crime scene was the victim's own apartment. So this footage we just always shot at the entrance to the victim's own apartment building. At the trial, Mr. Faraday claimed that this piece of footage existed. However, no one could find it. Yes, somehow someone was able to steal it and hide it through Mr. Ernest Amato. I can see how this would have been a definitive piece and why someone would want to hide it. But it's a piece of evidence from a ten-year-old case. There's no way it's related to this case we're working on now, sir. Actually, I believe it has everything to do with the case we're working on now. The ring leader even went so far as to use Mr. Portsman to retrieve it. Which means that in this video lies a very inconvenient bit of footage to the ring leader. Where? Where? Mm. Wait, what was that? Huh? That bit you played just now. Please show it to me again. Ernest Amato. This car! This is something we cannot overlook. Why is that, sir? Look here, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, is it on his bumpers? Not on the bumpers, on the, the front, front part. That thing? That thing. <laughs> this is the national flag of the Principality of Codopia. And because it has the national flag on it, we know this to be an official government car. But the question we should be asking ourselves is, what was a government car doing there? Ah, Miss Von Karma and Mr. Edgeworth, so you were here all this time. He doesn't look like a tree at all! From far away, no. Wait till he gets close up. Ambassador Alba. Thank you very much for continuing the investigation, even at this time of night. What is it, 2 a.m.? Ah, if only I was even a tiny bit more careful. This tragedy would never have happened. I am truly sorry. This wasn't your fault, sir. This had nothing to do with how careful you were. You idiot, Quercus! You couldn't chase after a simple thief! See, he looks a little like a tree. He looks... no. He looks like Athos... It's Athos trees and... only. <laughs> okay, he looks slightly like that tree. Yeah. But not like... when you look at him though as a whole, he looks like... he doesn't look like a tree at all. When you look at the spot between his chin and his forehead, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You could land a plane on that nose. <laughs> now then, let's get down to the real reason why I wanted the to, uh, came looking for the two of you. I would like you to put the investigation on hold for a while. Can you do that? Excuse me? I heard you've apprehended the thief that turned this embassy upside down. And we are in the middle of an event celebrating our country's reconciliation. We can't exactly have the police and detectives walking around here forever. Hmm. You're scaring the visitors away. So I hope you can understand how I feel. Ugh. But we must finish our investigation and resolve the remaining issues. Why don't we leave the rest to the Alabastian and Babalese police? Ambassador, we are so close! Just a little more and... Miss Von Karma, I'm afraid I've made up my mind. And without my permission, you can't proceed with your investigation anyway, right? Th that's true, however... As he said at the very beginning... This area can be considered to be Alabastian soil. In which case, we are nothing but foreigners in their land. Is this really where our investigation ends? Yeah. Shifu! We found Mr. Edgeworth, sir! Officer, this- uh, Shifu, this way! I'm officer. <laughs> Yo! I still have a bullet in my leg. Doesn't slow me down. <laughs> Does he? Th that- he took Sheen out of jail like two seconds ago. Couldn't have gotten Jail's that. not that close to the embassy. <laughs> what is that? Ha is that a regular occurrence? Huh? Also, here's the thing I'm trying to figure out. So, ambassador, whatever, is like, mm, we should go back to our festivities. Hmm, wasn't wasn't Paleno like worried about like, oh yeah, our, like our statue's totally fake. So like, this yeah, guy, Paleno's gonna be, like, statue. It's is gonna fake. be totally like a problem. When but keep in mind, together. the statue's got swaps. So right now. Alabast statue, which is the real one, is in Babal. Right, that's what I'm saying. I think that the ambassador will be like, You idiot of an ambassador, how can you even be meh? And then he's gonna like... Die. I don't think <laughs> and he's then gonna... she dies. No, no, it's not gonna be like, dies. But... He's only eh. 72. Agent Lane, you're back on the scene rather quickly. If I laid back and took a break, I'd lose the sense of my prey, Mr. Prosecutor. Agent Lane, why in the... Why have you returned? Because I have to solve this case no matter what. Well, I'm sorry to inform you. Ah, don't take this the wrong way. I don't suspect you personally. 
However, a member of Interpol was just found to be a thief, and so... <clears throat> Under these circumstances, I wish to put your investigation on hold. He's just like, on hold my butt? After all, I believe our own police can handle things from here. They are quite capable. Ugh, at this rate, our investigation really will come to a close. <laughs> <laughs> Best Rabbi, I get it now. I really do. Oh, I'm very glad you understand how I feel. No, not that. What I was talking about is... I know who the killer is behind tonight's murder. Y you No! D the Killer?! D do you really mean that, Agent Lane? <laughs> Wolves don't lie. He's like, it was me. Th th then who was it? Well, let me first say that I'm not taking uh, talking about Mr. Cochin's murder. That was all Sheena. Lane Z says, The truth lies not at the exit, but rather shines outside the maze itself. The truth is unexpectedly simple. So let me ask you this. Who do you think was Damask 2's killer? <laughs> I'll tell you who. It was you, Franziska Von Karma! I'm just waiting for him to whip him to death. I was the killer! Hey, wait! But, but that's impossible! Yeah! Although, that whip is actually quite... Yo! Hold your tongue and that ludicrous remark you were about to make! Agent Lane, are you seriously accusing her of murder? Yeah, I am. He doesn't appear to be joking. Hey sis, I remember that just before Ambassador Alba went to give his speech. He called you into his office, right? Y yes he did. But what does that have to do with anything? I'm getting to that. Furthermore, in order to solve both cases, you moved around rather freely between Alabasta and Babal, did you not? Objection! And where is your evidence that I am the killer? <laughs> I was just getting to that. Trust me, I'll show them to you in due time. Ambassador Alba, in order for me to bring this case to a close, I'll need to inspect your office one more time. Will you grant me permission? With things as they are, I suppose I don't have much of a choice, do I? In Good! Re in reality, like, just like, all right, now we can get you into his office and accuse him of murder. <laughs> you think that's what he's doing? Maybe! <laughs> That would be great. It'd be great. <laughs> Good. Then let's move out. Oh, and don't even think about running away, sis. My pack will be keeping a close eye on you. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. Like Annie. <laughs> yeah, like Annie. <laughs> As if I would have any reason to flee. But just so we're clear, your logic had better be sound. Because I'll accept nothing short of a perfect explanation. She seems rather upset. Not that I blame her. <laughs> I expected you'd accept it to no less. But we'll see how long you can keep that nose of yours stuck up in the air like that. <sighs> Agent Lane, as someone related to tonight's case, I request that you allow me to take part. And so that I might clean up my superior's mess. Hmm. <laughs> I guess I should. The more the merrier, especially when it's the peanut gallery. Oh, in that case, I want to join in too. I was like, hang on, I only wanted these people in I only my wanted office. two people in my office, not 50. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't seen what it looks like in all of us yet. If you like Kayan, then you gotta let me in too, pal. I can't sit around and do nothing when Miss Von Karma's in trouble. Hey, Gummy, let's have a competition to see who can save her first, okay? Oh, okay, I'll take you up on that. Oh, yeah, I'm fired up and raring to go. As a detective, I don't believe this is something you're supposed to be excited over. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to get real interesting. Don't ever write ha with three A's. It looks weird. It best- Ha! It best, Alba, I'll be bringing these kids along for the ride. Very well. But I'd like you to keep in mind that this will be your last chance. Hm. I'll have this whole mess cleaned up before you know it. Now let's go. March 15th, 1253. Wow, they were talking. Even that his office is really far away. <laughs> the Alabastian Embassy Ambassador's Office. Okay, now, let's first go over the facts one more time. 
Manny Cochin's body was found over in the Secretariat's office in Babal. The weapon that took his life was one of Alabast's ornamental knives. And then the body of Damas II, Mr. Casino, was found here in the Alabastian Ambassador's office. Through our investigation, we found that the murder weapon was this Primadu statue. And that this is actually Babal's statue. This case, no matter how I look at it, Sis, if it wasn't you, then there's no one else who could have pulled this off. Objection! Agent Lang, do you understand the full implications of what you are saying? Of course I do, Sis, and I'm serious. You were on the trail of the smuggling ring, and you wanted any evidence you could find. And so while people were distracted by the Yadagurasu's appearance, you snuck in here. That's when you two ran into each other. You and that other thief who took advantage of the confusion from the fire. Objection! Even if all of that were true, how do you explain the movement of the weapons? Hm. <laughs> Don't worry, I plan to show that you're the culprit behind that too. You had permission to investigate both embassies at will. With that kind of free reign, you could have easily taken the weapons across country lines. Hey now! He just caught her whip as she tried wow, to- Wow, that was really cool! <laughs> With a shot leg! Look, sis, I thought I already told you, I'm not messing around here. Ugh. This case isn't directly tied to the smuggling ring, but Sheena certainly is tied to the smuggling ring. He's right in saying that she is a member of the smuggling ring. However, the connection between this case and the ring, could it not be deeper than that what any of us can imagine? Ugh. Let's get this ridiculous surface, surface? The circus? Let's get this ridiculous circus over with already! Franziska, you need to calm down, because you only know the facts of the Alabastian side of the case. I don't believe you can see the case as a whole, and therefore solve it. What?! But don't worry, I am taking this seriously as well, and I will prove your innocence. That's the only way to be, Mr. Prosecutor. But can you come up with anything else that could top my hypothesis? I'm gonna be so mad if she's actually the reason that all these weapons were moved. But and, like, like, they just stuck it in her Francisca pocket. And Francisca never comes back to any of the more games, because they're like, yeah, like, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. My subordinate, like, was convicted of murder, and your subordinate's convicted oh. of murder. So do you think she's actually the murderer, or do you just think, think she'll so, be convicted but of I murder? will be really mad if that's where the game goes. Oh. Of course, your explanation has to top the mystery of the moving weapons as well. Did I say top or solve? I think you said top. It's got to top my hypothesis for explaining the mystery of movements of the weapons as well. Of course, and it will. Let us now delve into the truth beyond the murder of Damask II. You do understand, don't you, Miles Edgeworth? This isn't just some confrontation against Agent Lang. If you can't figure out how the murder of Damask II is related to the smuggling ring, then it will mean the end of our investigation. As long as I have no good counter-argument to his hypothesis, then the best I can do is walk this thin tightrope and see what I can do. Come on, Mr. Prosecutor, let's get started. Yes, let's. Wait, we're just gonna battle now? I thought we had to check out the room, investigate! We've, we've already checked out the room. We have to check out the room even more. We barely were there. <laughs> What's in Ambassador Alba's dress, desk drawer? <gasps> He reads Fifty Shades of Grey? That would be shocking. <laughs> no, that's not- Mac forgot to wipe his mud flaps. <laughs> what? Huge diehard fans of Cars will get that reference. <laughs> Even I don't know that, and I, like, watched Cars. <laughs> Never mind. Border crossing weapons. One of Alabast's knives was used in Babal to murder Mr. Cochin. And the murder weapon in the killing of Damask II is Babal's Primadu statue. Somehow, these two objects were able to penetrate the two countries' impenetrable security. The only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. So as long as I can't explain how the weapons moved about, Francisco will remain a suspect. You got it, Mr. Prosecutor. So why don't you stop giving me a hard time? Under these circumstances, who the heck could carry a weapon across country lines? I've worked through every possibility, but there's only one that's plausible. Your boss. Agent Lane, what I've learned from you just now is that you've lost sight of yourself. Wh what are you talking about? By focusing too intently on that which is in front of us, you become blind to the truth. Don't tell me Lane Z never said anything to that effect. You prosecutor! Who do you think you are speaking about Lane Z's proverbs like that? <laughs> I don't need his proverbs. Because my words are all you will need to see the truth. Solomon had better proverbs. Yeah. Border crossing weapons. Dun, dun. Hold it. 
He has a dragon on his sleeve, and I just realized that. <laughs> yeah, I concur that this knife crossed over country lines. Good, but that's not the only thing it did. We mustn't forget about the other weapon. The knife was only one. Murder weapon in the Killian's Smith. Two is the primitive statue from below. So you're saying that the primitive statue was also brought over by Franziska? Like I told you before, that's the only way it makes sense. And how exactly did she bring it over? I haven't figured that out yet. Hm, <laughs> that's a rather weak statement considering how sure you are. Maybe, but there's one thing I do know for sure. Oh, she put it in her pocket. Her non-existent girl pocket. <laughs> the back pockets usually work. <laughs> Those are really tiny, though. Where, like, even, your, not... even your phone is sticking out of, like, the back pockets. Yeah. It's, it's a knife. Normal? It's just, like, a, a knife. It's, like, is that a knife sticking you, out of your butt pocket? Wait. No. If you put your phone in your back pocket, does it stick out? I don't put my phone in my back pocket. I put it in my regular pocket. Yeah, but that's because that your regular pockets are, like... Remember that comic from Zitz where Hector was trying to get something yeah. out of his cargo pants? I can confirm cargo pants are like that. Yeah, they're like endless, and then like, it's like an endless dimension, and then girls' pockets, it's like, they're either non-existent- But girls have purses, which are bottomless pits. But, but purses suck, okay? I hate purses. I know I'm not the stereotypical girl. Yeah. I have like two purses, one for like regular wear, and one when I need to be ever so slightly fancier. Mm. Impenetrable? I should hardly think so. You've seen the top of the wall between the two countries, right? Who in the world could cross over that? Yeah, not even I could climb over that thing with all the barbed wire. The only way into either embassy is through the doors in the Theatrum Neutralis. So the only way for the knife and the Primidu statue to traverse the two countries is through those security camera equipped, well guarded doors. The only one to traverse the two countries just before and after the crimes was Franziska. Um... Was Franziska really the only person to have traveled between the two countries? According to the guards at both doors, she's the only one to go back and forth. The sis was there in the Alabast when the Yadagarasu showed. And then just before you guys found Mr. Cochin's body, she entered Babal. I think we can assume that's when she brought the knife into Babal. Then how do you explain the Primidu statue? I haven't quite figured that out yet. However, the fact that the two weapons crossed the border proves that the killer must have also traveled across the country lines. The only things to cross the border are the primitive statue and the knife. I should hardly think that those are the only two items, Agent Lane. It's probably this one. Again, I still don't really remember what to do in a lot of these situations. That also had to tra uh, traverse country lines. Yeah. The real one. But do they know that? Or used to be real. <laughs> See, that's the thing. When you're presenting that, are you presenting the real one or are you presenting the fake one? What about the other statue? What does it say? Yeah, it's like, what if you want to present the real one? Which one would you present? Because it's currently in Babal right now, but well, it was originally all about. States are our friend. Yeah, that's just, that's bad. Right. Uh... Just try a statue. Objection. Nope. Agent Lane, about this piece of evidence. Lane Z says, Confidence is like a soul, and words without confidence are but empty shells. You shouldn't waste your breath on words you have no confidence in, Mr. Prosecutor. Although it's just bad to say something in full confidence and be wrong. Arr! Are you going to let him lecture you about your self-confidence like that? I don't need to be overflowing of self-confidence, I just need to think rationally. After all, I only need to be confident in the facts. Is it that one? the note? Because it was in the other... Objection. I nope. guess not. The Yadagurasu flew from one side to the other. <laughs> I mean, it could be something stupid like that. Is it actually that? Objection. No. No. Maybe it's the... Was it the 
Yadagarasu's key because it was, well, Manny Cochin had it? Actually, Callisto Yu had it, and then she put it on Manny Cochin's body. Which is dumb. Counter the bills? These two oh, objects. maybe it's these two objects. Let's try that. There we go. Oh, wrong statement, that's all. Agent Lane, those two items are not the only two to cross the border tonight. Oh. Damask 2 was killed with Babal's Primidu statue, yes. But if that's the case, then tell me, where did Alabast's Primidu statue go? To Babal. Precisely. And if the two statues really were switched, then this means that both statues were smuggled across the border at some point. Which means that a total of three items were smuggled across the embassies. Hmm. I guess so. But you know what? It doesn't matter the number of items, only that the Sis is the only one who could have done it. Because the only person who went back and forth between Alabast and Babal is her! Is that really true? Was there no one else who traveled between the two countries? Actually, there was definitely another person. One who paid a visit to both sides of the wall. Objection! Is that really so, Agent Lane? <laughs> What a lousy time to try and bluff your way out of this. I checked out what the guards said on all of the security camera's footage. You're not going to overturn my hypothesis that easily. But suppose there was some other way than through the theater doors. What other way? The other entity that managed to cross the border unharmed. If I pointed out, it would open up a whole new possibility. And though I hesitate to bring this out, as long as this entity exists, the impossible road becomes a possibility. It looks like you've got some clever idea in mind. I do, and I can show it to be you through a single piece of evidence. Fine then. Let's see this piece of evidence that will show me this other route. This piece of evidence will show you another way to move between the two countries. Flu powder powder flu powder powder. <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> well, okay, are there two fireplaces per room? One. Okay, so no. Is it just the picture of them flying? Take Agent Lane, I'm sure you are familiar with this unforgettable photo that Lotta Hart took. <laughs> that supernatural photo? Like I said before. Humans can't fly. No, of course not. I understand that perfectly well. And don't start claiming that Sheena somehow grew wings, Ivor. Maleficent! Yeah, Maleficent. Maleficent did it. I wouldn't dream of claiming that. And I won't allow you to take back what you've said, Ivor. I'll say it again, it's not humanly possible to fly through the air without wings. So you'd better have a good explanation for this, Mr. Prosecutor. Ugh. But how can I prove who it was that flew through the air in this photo? Wait. Not humanly possible. Eureka. Very well. You will have your explanation. It sounds like you have a good idea simmering inside that head of yours. Let's hear it. The face hidden within this photo's blurry trailed shadow is... Oh, um... Uh... What, we have to pick something in the evidence? Yeah. Is it the samurai infant... We don't, ha we don't have evidence? that. We don't have that as evidence. We do have that. Because he bent it, Larry couldn't do the early okay, summer rain fine, jabs. That's fine. You know that's going to be important, too. Was it one of the statues? That'd be ridiculous. Want to try? Uh, what else is there? Uh, we, we got wood and mushrooms. Okay, no. Samurai dogs. Yeah, two it's probably knives. one of the statues. Which, how would that work? Isn't it heavy? No, the hollow one isn't heavy. Take that! Oh, I picked the wrong one. Again! Which one do you pick? <laughs> Naturally, the shadow is the third smuggled object, the Primidu statue replica. You can't be serious! The Yadagarasu, or rather Callisto you dressed as Agent Sheena, was inside the ball. She dressed the replica statue up in clothes and launched it through the air. Ha! Mr. Prosecutor! You let out you left out a very crucial bit in your explanation. I know I did. She launched it through the air. Ha! <laughs> and how exactly did she do that? He is literally burying his fangs at me. Yeah, he does have fangs. But he has a point. Little canine teeth are longer. <laughs> how exactly did it move through the air like that? 
She doesn't throw like a girl. <laughs> she just chucked it. <laughs> she threw it. And Waterheart happened to put, put take a picture of it. She threw it out the window. It, as I long mean... as this remains unsolved, we won't be able to move any closer to the truth. Which reminds me, didn't he say this earlier? Hey sis, I remember that just before Ambassador Alba went to give his speech. He called you into his office, right? So just before the murder, Francisco was called here right into this very room. If that's the case, then that may be another avenue I can pursue. Agent Lane, in order for me to answer that question, I will need to hear testimony from Miss Von Karma. Oh, what are you up to now, pretty boy? Earlier, you mentioned something of interest to me. You said that just before the murder occurred, Miss Von Karma had been in this room because Ambassador Alba had called for her. And for that reason alone, you believe her to be the killer. Yeah, I guess I did say something like that. In that case, I believe it is my duty to ask her what her side of the story is. Ha! Do you really think a criminal would tell us the honest truth? How dare you! As I've said numerous times, there's absolutely no proof that I'm the killer! Miles Edgeworth, don't tell me you suspect me too. I don't. However, I can't ignore the fact that you were in this room at one point in time. Which is why I would like to hear about your movements in this room. Ugh. Francisca, I feel that I still don't have enough information. Which is why your testimony is incredibly important to the outcome of this case. Alright. So, what would you like me to talk about? Hmm... I'd like you to please testify to your movements in this room until the murder occurred. <laughs> Alright, let's try this way your way for a change. But, if what she has to say turns out to be a waste of time... I'll place her under arrest but faster before you can howl- No! <laughs> As you wish. Movements in Alabast. As I said earlier, I was assigned to guard duty in the Alabastian Embassy. After I saw the Steel Samurai off on his way toward the Ambassador's office, I returned to the Rose Garden for a bit and checked up on the security situation. After all the preparations were in place, I was called back to or er, called back by Miss called back by Ambassador Alba to his office. Oh, that's it. That's very... Francisca, I want us to make this clear from the very beginning. So what I wish to confirm is that the only time span in which you were in this office was before the murder occurred. Is that correct? Yes, of course. I see. For now, the only way I can see for us to break out of this situation is to ask Francisca about her testimony in more detail. Well, we'll have to do that next time on Miles Edge Face Attorney Investigations 1. Thanks for watching, everybody! Tune in next time for more cross-examining. You see? This last case is just so slow. It's dragging on after that. Before, it was, like, really interesting. Was it? As you said, if they had just ended it at the end of last case, I think that would have been an interesting end. Obviously, they'd have to tie up a few more Yeah, ends. they would have to change up things a little bit. And they would have to tie up a few ends, like, a big epilogue after. But I think it would work. It would work, yeah. It would work. Uh... Anyhow, until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless.